Paul, one on one with Fessy Sitake. Coach, we're officially into week two, uh, fall camp, and now you've had five full practices. You're in the full pads for the first time. So, how was today different than the first few days based on not just pads, but the atmosphere overall? First is obvious, it's just more physical. You know, guys are starting to, they want to get acclimated to hitting, and uh, a lot of, been a lot of talking, good, healthy banter back and forth. And so, to be able to put some pads to it, uh, it, it was increased energy. Defense had a great day today, they got the best of us, but. Good opportunity for us to come back tomorrow and get them. Um, but love it. Great competition. It's good to see the guys flying around in pads. Why do you say the defense won the day specifically? Uh, they had more stops. You know, we had some turnovers, and, and uh, they just they made more plays than us today. How would you assess the overall offensive performance thus far in terms of what you've done best and where maybe your biggest question mark still remains? I think it varies by position group, but in general, you can see – the, the increased chemistry. You know, last year, I don't think we had a shortage of good players. We just, you know, when you dip in the portal, that's the trade off. You got uh, talented guys who are still latching onto some of those nuances uh, that we've been, a, we've been spoiled by, honestly, uh, in, in our time here. And so to be able to see a lot of these guys latch onto the playbook, uh, you know, tighten up on some of those little details that they weren't able to last year, I think that's been the biggest, um, you know, the biggest clear, you know, clear sign this, this fall in, in our improvement. So I've been really happy uh, to see, is, is it like in my group specifically, um, some of those guys who were, who were newer last year just take a big jump. Let's talk about your specific group. A lot of people think that the wide receiver group is the deepest on the team. And to your point, you bring back a lot of guys. What has the core done maybe to solidify the argument that, that the receivers group is the deepest on the team? Well, uh, I, I, I'll stay away <laughs> from that argument. Um, I can just answer what they've done is everything I just talked about in terms of, there's so many parts of our playbook. Um, each concept brings a wide range of variables that you have to be ready for and you have to adjust to live time. The processing speed has to increase. How's my route gonna change? How, how is my technique gonna change in this specific route? All those little things, where should my split be? How does it change according to where we're at on the field? You know, all those things are, are, are critical and operating fast and those guys, that's what I feel they've done. Um, some of the things I was harping on heavy last year, uh, getting frustrated, a source of frustration. They, they, they don't really exist right now. Um, so obviously there's still room to improve and we gotta, we gotta get better, but I, I, I love the jump that they've, making, uh, that they've taken. And in terms of making the case for the, they can talk about the deepest group. You know, I don't know if that's the reason, I just know that that's what they've gotten better at. Who are your leaders in the wide receiver room right now? Man, that's a, that's a good question. And I, I'm, I'm happily, you know, I'll, I'll happily say that every guy has, brings his own sense of leadership. Um, I think naturally the, the older, the veteran guys, Darius Lasseter, who's my true senior, uh, Chase Roberts and, and Cody Epps, um, they, they, you know, have great leadership qualities to them. They've been the most vocal. Um, guys lean on those guys and their playmaking ability. But then that next wave of guys in Keelan, JoJo, and Parker, who are a little, you know, a little bit more youthful in the offense, like they, they have great energy, man. And, and JoJo doesn't say a word, but he leads in the way he makes plays. Keelan's got a lot of energy and juice. Parker's been making a ton of plays. So it's, I just love that each one of them um, have, a, have a feeling that to be a leader, you don't have to be the oldest guy in the room. Uh, and you can lead in many different ways. And I've been happy with that. Aaron Roderick and some other offensive players have said, and we're installing a lot of material right now. And naturally, when you throw in a bunch of new stuff, sometimes that can be difficult for an offense to adjust to. So how much of maybe some offensive struggles and frustrations in these last few days is because of the install? Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to quantify that, but there's a good portion. Like you can see some of the pre-snap, you know, uh, procedures that we're having, some of the guys who are not playing full speed. I would, I would say that that's the reason. You know, when we have turnovers, you know, guys are, you know, we're missing, we're missing assignments. But I think in general, um, as we scale it back, we'll start to clean things up a lot more. We knew as a staff that there's going to, you know, throwing the offense at them is going to come with some, with some, uh, some hard plays, some mistakes. It's hard to, we say that, but then you come on the field and the emotions are high, right? Yeah. You get frustrated. And so there, it's a good opportunity and learning experience for us as coaches to say, hey, we know what we're up against. Let's, let's, you know, keep our emotions cool. And, and I, I think we've done a good job of that. But I'm, I'm excited to, I think I would say about you know 90% of the offense is in, and so there's a couple of special stuff we need to install. But as we start to scale back, get more specific versus our defense or a future opponent, I think we'll execute cleaner.
Bessie Sitake is with us on BYU Sports Nation after practice number five. How has the quarterback battle specifically impacted this camp and maybe made it unique compared to camps you've been in in previous years? Yeah, I think it's just made everyone focus on their job. You know, like, uh, you know, I know, you know, the narrative out there, it's, it's the guys get it. They're like, there's this battle. There's, you know, some people see it as a controversy. Um, the message for all the other position groups is like, who cares? Like, that's going to work itself out. you got to become accustomed to you know, understanding the, the cadence and the tempo of, of each quarterback, how they throw, uh, their skill sets, and, and it forces forces these guys to really look at the more important things as opposed to the end and who's going to win that job. And I, so I think, you know, we got we as coaches got to do a, a, a continually do a great job at framing uh, how we can actually become better through this this competition as opposed to getting caught up in a lot of the hype. Your close colleague and offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick has said he's in no rush to name a starter but I'm sure there is a timeline. So what can you tell us about the desired timeline? If you had to like circle a date or a week where it was in the best interest of your offense, your staff, and your team to have a quarterback, when would that be? I would go to A-Rod and say, hey, God, give him a calendar and say, circle the date so I can tell Spencer <laughs> when that is. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know. I don't, I don't get paid for that decision or circling that date. I think I saw August 15th right there, there on my go. imaginary calendar. <laughs> my imaginary calendar. We'll say that. Okay, well played. That's a veteran <laughs> answer on your part for sure. I have to ask it though for sure. Okay, as you push forward at this point, um, again I know we're only five days in, but what's your biggest question mark about the offense in general? Um, I think one thing we haven't been tested with right now, like we're. We're throwing in the playbook. We're working on a lot, a lot of different situations. We've got to sustain drives. Mm. And so we haven't been able to go against our defense and just see how we can march down the field and do that over and over and over. So that's the biggest question. Obviously, I'm optimistic that we're going to be able to do that when the time comes. And so, um, but naturally, that's my biggest question right now. Okay, some quick hitters to finish. What's the best thing that Gary Bohannon has brought to this team? Um, toughness and great leadership. Mm. And the same question for Jake Retzloff savviness swagger and humor okay i like that and then in the wide receiver room who has surprised you um i hate naming one name but i know you're you're gonna i don't want to leave you hanging i'll say uh jojo phillips he's not a surprise he's not a surprise in that way but um i'll just say he's kind of had the the most um consistent camp relative to where he was last year so. I love that. And for what it's worth, I've heard his name and Prince Zombo from a bunch of the guys. So, hey, you're on par with what the other guys are saying. Fessy, you appreciate the time. Know how busy you are. Uh, best of luck to you the rest of fall camp. And, um, again, I'll go look at my imaginary calendar and, send, and, and imagine when that quarterback's going to be named. I'll text you that circle date. <laughs> so, Thanks, Fessy. Yep, thank you.